All right, let's get into our study. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. So go there, if you will. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Again. Yes, we're going to go verse by verse. That's right. Dodie says again. Dodie, I, we got to go verse by verse. You know that. I don't skip a verse in Paul's epistles because it is this information that we're going to be judged on at the judgment seat of Christ, having Amen. this information in us. So the, when, when Paul talks about the word of Christ, every preacher should be going verse by verse through Paul's epistles. Amen edifying the saints and, and getting them ready for the judgment seat of Christ. We're in chapter 6, verse 9. I'm going to read the verse and we'll have a word of prayer. As Paul and his ministers are approving themselves both to God as well as man, he says in verse 9, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time this morning. We thank you for our, our precious Savior, your glorious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who came to earth, lived that sinless life, that impeccable, perfect life under your holy law. And he died on that cruel and criminal Roman cross for our sins. Father, we thank you for his shed blood. May we never uh, um, take, never take uh, for granted uh, that, that, that perfect sacrifice that you have given mankind. May we appreciate it and may we let others know about it. May we get that word of Christ out to others. But we thank you that by faith alone, through Christ alone, we can have everlasting life as a free gift. Thank you for the holy scriptures that we're going to study today. We thank you for the apostle Paul, the one who gave us the scripture for us today, our great apostle. May we look at the word of Christ through our apostle. May we take it in. May we believe it and let it work out through us, therefore building the mind of Christ in us and the life of Christ out of us. Father, give us great understanding and wisdom, and most importantly, a greater appreciation of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in his wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, look at verse number nine. Uh, last week, we, we, the title was unknown yet well known, but we, we ended in verse eight. And what I want you to see is, let's get the context of it. I should do this each week, but I'm just going to read down from verse one, because I want you to see why is Paul talking about these different things. <clears throat> So if you look at verse 1 of chapter 6, we then, speaking of Paul and his ministers, as workers together with him, that's with God the Father, they work with God, beseech you, they beg you, and, and the you are the Corinthians, the brothers and sisters at Corinth, uh, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. You can receive the grace of God in vain. Just because you're saved doesn't mean you'll be approved unto God. If, 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 if it was automatic approval, Paul wouldn't have to tell Timothy to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so in verse 2, he says, for he said, and he, and he, and he quotes uh, uh, the, the, the Old Testament, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee, or I rescued you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now, he's not telling these saints that they need to get saved all over again as far as their soul from hell. But they do need to be saved from loss of reward. He's trying to recover these saints. And so Paul shows why he's qualified. Verse 3, giving no offense in anything. He was very careful as the minister of God to not offend the, the ministry. He says that the ministry be not blamed. And then he goes on to show, verse 4, but in all things approving ourselves, that's him and his, his, his uh, men, as the ministers of God. So the whole point of reading these verses is to show that Paul and, and men with him, Silas, Timotheus, and all these others, they are approved as ministers of God. And remember, they're not ministers of God. Proof, the proof is not the fact that they had uh, you know, three-piece suits and jets and, and all type of wonderful cars like the health, wealth, prosperity. It was the opposite. They were approved because of what they suffered for Christ's sake. Look at verse 4. In all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience. And we went over all these things. In afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, and in labors, in watchings, in fastings. Now, if, you, if this is your first study with us, you're going to have to go out and look at the past studies, which even on there, here on the Facebook and there on YouTube. He says in verse 6, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, 
I, I, I was struck by that. It said Paul, Paul approved himself as a minister of God by how kind he was to others, even those who opposed him. The Corinthians opposed him. If Go down to chapter 7, look at verse 2. We're going to look at it. Um, if the Lord tears, we're going to look at this passage. But look at verse 2. 2 Corinthians 7, 2. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Paul says we're above board in our dealings with you. He's, he has to tell saints that he got saved. Remember, he's the one who got Paul... Paul got them saved over there in Acts chapter 18 when he went to Corinth. Yet he had, it's like you and I talking to our children saying, remember, I'm your father, I'm your mom. Why do you have to, why do you have to remind them? Because you're telling them, listen to me. Remember who I am. In fact, go to chapter 6, verse 13. 2 Corinthians 6, 13. Now for a recompense in the same. Now look what he says in the parentheses. I speak as unto my, what? Children. children. Paul looks at those people as children, his spiritual children, not 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 children like babies, although spiritually they were. He called them babes in Christ. First Corinthians. But he says in first Corinthians chapter four, you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you only have one father for in Christ Jesus. I have begotten you Corinthians through the gospel. Wherefore, be ye followers of me. Paul is their spiritual father. And, and as a father, it would, it would hurt my, my heart to the core if my own little daughter, Jada Lynn, rejected me. Because I'm saying, who do you think was with you every moment of your life from conception? Your daddy. Your dad. And for her to reject me would be a slap in the face. And that's how Paul feels. He's saying, you guys are saved. You guys are on your way to heaven based upon my labor in your life. Anybody who has children understand that. If, you, if you've labored in your children's life and you, you plan it in their life, and when they become grown, they, they reject you, it hurts your heart because you invested so much in them. Time, talent, treasure. Well, Paul felt that way. So he goes back. Go back to chapter 6. He says in verse 6, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness. I love that. Be ye kind one to another, Ephesians. Tender-hearted. Those are the words that, that, from parents to children. You know, as a parent, we're tender-hearted towards our children. We're tender-hearted. Well, God wants us to be that way, too. He says, by the Holy Ghost, by love and fame, by the word of truth. We went over all of this. Paul, that word of truth, his epistles were proof of who he was. He wrote God's word down. Verse number seven, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. And last week we saw by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report. Mm -hmm. And then we ended as deceivers yet true. And today he says in verse nine, as unknown yet well known. Now, what does it mean to be unknown yet well known? Unknown means that no one knows about you or cares about you. OK, and can I tell you, in all my years in the grace message, I've been a grace message half my life. In fact, my, my entire grown-up life. And there's something that I've come to know, even being in ministry. I'm the face of this ministry, but when it comes to Christendom, the grace messaging, us grace believers, we're unknown. We're like, we're, we're so small, you know. Amen. We're so small. No, that's fine. No one knows, hardly knows about us. No one cares about us. We're small, insignificant, unimportant, and we're worthless to the world. How many of us pass church after church after church? There's a church right across the street from our apartment. And as, every morning I see the people piling in and they have multiple services, all these. And I'm like, it's just a waste of time. Many of you come from far places where you pass churches up. Mm -hmm. Big churches, big parking lots. Mm -hmm. They don't know about us. They don't care about us. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> we, the post office starts sending our mail back. That's why we, we were having problems with our internet. She's, the lady just starts sending our mail back. She goes, I've been delivering here. I didn't even know you guys were here. Oh, no. Ryan's like, our sign's right there. <laughs> we're getting first class mail, you know. My mother, who's a postal uh, a carrier for years and years, she said if they get first class mail, especially bills, they spoke anyway. <laughs> they shut off our internet last week because the lady sent their stuff back. By the way, the guy who sent the offer, he says, Brother Ron, they, they, I, got my, I got it uh, sent back to me. 
And I was just laughing because she, she, she didn't even know we were here. She knew the other church next door we rented from, but they didn't even, they don't care about us, right? Mm -hmm. Well, to be well known means you're known far and wide. You're famous or even infamous, as they say. God knows. Ah, we're going to get to that, don't see. Yeah. Nobody said, God knows. You, you know where I'm going. The Bible talks about men of renown and so forth. But Dodie went, we're going to get to that because although we're not that known amongst Christendom, right. we are known Amen. to the person who matters, and that's the Lord. Amen. The Lord God. Amen. Um, this issue of unknown, but go to Acts 17. Go over to Acts 17. Let me show you something in Acts 17. <clears throat> and by the way, we're more, we're more known than, than most people think, too. Let me show in this way. I remember when I first met Krista, and I visited her in Minnesota back in 2003. We were, at a, we were sitting outside on her porch just talking about the word and stuff. And this contingent of Baptist, Baptist men came with Bibles and talk, you know, they wanted to talk to us about the word. And I told Krista I was more interested in talking to her. I was getting to know her. I don't want to talk to them. She said, no, talk to them. You know the word, do and as the guy comes talking about, do you know the Lord Jesus? I said, yes, we do. We say we trust Christ as our Savior. Okay, then. And we got to talking. And I, I didn't get two minutes into the conversation. He says, you're one of those dispensationalists, aren't you? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, you heard of us, huh? He says, yeah. He says, we in my Baptist church, we think you dispensationalists are the best Bible teachers around. And I shocked me. He says, I said, well, why don't you believe the doctrine? Because he actually mentioned out of his own mouth, the guy who's leading the thing, he said, yeah, we think you guys explain the Bible the best. I go, yeah, it's called rightly dividing the word of truth. Why don't you believe it? But he was so into his Baptist doctrine, he didn't even understand what he was saying. He, right. he, he looked at me and said, you guys exp expound on the Bible better than anybody else. I go, yeah, because we rightly divide. Mm -hmm. That's right. But in the big scheme of things, we're not that well known. Look at Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. It says unknown yet well known. Paul, although it was a little group of people in the beginning of the dispensation of grace as grace believers, when he was somewhere speaking the word, it became apparent that there was some power in what he was teaching. Notice here in verse number two, Acts 17, verse two. And Paul, as his manner was, he's at Thessalonica, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered. This is what you have to talk to a Jewish person about. Christ suffering. You know why that's important? Because the Jews believe that Messiah is not the suffering Messiah. He's the conquering Messiah. But they ignore the verses. I've talked to these so-called Jews. And they ignore the verses from Isaiah 53 that talks about the suffering Messiah. In fact, I had a guy tell me. He says, yeah, the tough one for us Jews is Isaiah 53. And read it on your own time. That's the one that talks about it. he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our, our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we hear those things about the suffering Messiah. And so Paul has to tell them Christ, the Messiah, must need to have suffered. And by the way, Isaiah 53 says he, was, he made his grave with the wicked and so forth. He died. And verse 3, and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus... Once you get them to recognize, okay, it makes sense that Messiah had to die. That's why he didn't come down off the cross. Remember, I told you that guy who I bought this car from years and years ago when I first got saved. I worked with his wife and I needed a little car. And he sold cars. He was his name David Brennan. He was from Israel. And he moved to Illinois. And uh, the, I, I, my, I stepped foot into his house. He goes, yeah, my wife tells me you're a Christian, right? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're sitting down, we're doing the bill of sale, and he says, uh, yeah, I know who Jesus is. I said, oh, you do? He said, yeah, we over in Israel, we know who Jesus is. Now, we don't believe he's a son of God, right. but he was a good man, you know, I guess. But, uh, and then I talked to him. He says, I got one question, though. I'm telling you, he said, he says, if he really was the son of God, why didn't he come down off the cross? This guy has never read the New Testament. Those are the exact questions his ancestors asked. If you're really the son of God, come down from the cross and we'll believe you. And so I explained to him, no, he had to die. And I quoted what Paul would quote, Isaiah 53. Right. Now what happens? Verse number three, he says, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered 
and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Verse 4, this is going to happen. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas. Those were the reasonable guys who you could reason with from the scripture. And of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of chief women, not a few. It was in that order, those Jews, those Gentiles, and those women. Verse 5, but the Jews which believed not. you always going to have that group. Pride and unbelief. It's hey, Mark. Pride and unbelief. Verse 5, but the Jews which believed not. Moved with envy. We got, we got a seat up here, Mark. You like a couple of seats up here. We're in uh, Acts 17, 5. But the Jews which believed not moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, now check this out, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. In verse 6 it says, And when they had found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying. Now remember this issue of unknown yet well known? It was a little band of Jews and Gentiles who believed on Jesus in this area. But notice what the people said about them. He says at the end of verse number six. And when, starting at verse six, and when they found them not, they drew Jason. Jason was where Paul was staying, the house of Jason. And certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. When, whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. Notice this little band of guys, unknown, yet through the ministry of Christ, was well known. And, and I, I think that's what we can see in, in, even in our day. I was thinking about this. I wrote this a few weeks back. Unknown yet well known. The Jews at Rome. When Paul finally went to Rome, the Jews there in the book of Acts said, we've heard nothing of this man, but we'll hear him out. Everywhere else, he turned the world upside down. We, this is Acts 17 and Acts 19. He did the same thing. Even James, the, the head apostle of Israel at the time in Acts 21, he says to Paul, the whole world is telling us that you're turning all of our Jewish people away from Moses. Paul says, I'm not doing that. That's just the rumor that he was because he was teaching Gentiles grace and not law. And so what Paul, I, I wrote this, Pauline dispensationalism throughout the last 2,000 years, it's been there, okay? It's been there. Only a few, a little, a little silver line, but we've been there. But the history of Christendom was written by the winners, particularly Roman Catholicism. So when you read history books, you hear people talk about the Paulinians and all these people who, who we recognize as us. They are looked at as heretics, speaking about this grace stuff, no works. So we're looked at as heretics. We're, we're, we're looked at as apostate. But if you look at what they're saying, they believe that you're saved by grace plus nothing. Saved by grace through faith plus nothing. Well, we do believe that because that's what Paul says. You have the Pauliceans and so forth. And in my experience in ministry and in multiple congregations, there's so many people who know about us in the local area. I remember being on this cable channel and... We're just this little group, and we would teach the book of Galatians. And obviously, there was a guy who was what they call a Messianic Jew or something, or some, I don't know what he called himself. But he made a big deal about Moses. And if you know the book of Galatians, it's all about Paul and the grace of God. Well, evidently, some of his people have been watching my, our program right after his came on. Because after about a month, that everything that I would talk about, that guy got, he's... he's he would go against it. He, he, he became anti the Apostle Paul even more, and he started pushing against God's grace. He had a large Jewish congregation, but we were, we were this little congregation, and we were unknown, really, at that time. This was uh, way back when, when our Twin Cities Grace Fellowship began, but we were being well known in that area because they were hearing the message of grace, and they were responding to it in a negative way, but they were responding. We're not talked about much, but God the Father 
knows who we are. And that's what's most important. I want you to see this with me. Go to 1 Corinthians. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. First, sorry, 1 first Corinthians chapter number 8. 1 Corinthians 8. In my experience, you're not going to be that well known amongst Christendom, okay? It's just not going to happen. It's too much pride and unbelief for people to, 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 to stick with this message. But for those of us who do stick with the message, notice in verse number, 1 Corinthians 8, verse 2. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. This is Paul talking about how we need to keep growing and being edified in the grace message. But then God does look at our hearts for him. God is less concerned with how fast you grow than you having the right attitude or spirit or heart. Okay, he does look at the heart, it says. Notice verse 3. But if any man love God... The same is known of who? Of him. And so although we're unknown when it comes to Christendom in the world, I get this question a lot. Brother Ron, how come other churches don't teach this message if you teach it? I said their ministers don't want to suffer for the message. This message, you're not going to get rich. We don't even pass an offering plate at this place. <coughs> you're not going to get rich. My wife and I have taken a vow of poverty, basically, okay? <laughs> That's what life in the grace, a faithful life in the grace ministry. That's what it is. We accept that. It's like manna in the wilderness. We just pray to God every day to provide for our family. You go to a Baptist church. I've been to them. I went to a Baptist church back in the day. They took collection three times in one hour. Woo three times. You send that plate in the beginning. In the middle, and at the end, when you're out the door, let's go. Put it in there. And they, they put the plate there, so you got to look, you know. <laughs> you don't put nothing in there. People are watching and stuff like that. Yeah. they putting pressure on you. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Ron, God yes. loves us because we love his appearing to the apostles. That's, that's what we're talking about. When he talks about any man love God, when Paul talks about loving his appearing, 2, 2 Timothy 4, Matthew, you got it right. He talks about, therefore is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, but not unto me only, but all them that love is apparent. And it's that love for the Lord Jesus Christ, that love of God, and that makes God know you. It doesn't mean God don't know everybody. He does. But that issue of knowing you is an intimacy. Yeah. And although we're unknown to the world, we're well known to God the Father. And that's what really what, what we ought to focus on. It's not about numbers, guys, especially in these last days of grace, especially in California. We were talking before the session, you know, when we left Minnesota seven years ago, that last Sunday, we had 125 saints. I mentioned our brother Jordan's ministry. He's, he's about a couple hundred, but he's been there 40 years, and, 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 and there's a lot more grace believers in the Midwest. It's just the way it's going to be. So I, I want to encourage you guys here, don't look at the numbers. What we're looking at is for hearts that love God. That's what Paul says in verse 3. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. So that issue of being unknown yet well known, don't look for us to be accepted in this world. I'm just going to tell you that. I haven't seen it. We're thankful for every human soul that comes into this place and loves the word of God. It's going to be a small percentage of Christendom, but you can be that person as well. Go back to chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians. And Paul and his ministers were the same way. Let me see if I, I, I didn't I didn't put it in my notes. I, I'm gonna think I'm gonna go, go I'm gonna show you guys there. Uh, let me look at Acts real quick. You guys go back to 2 Corinthians. Let me see if I can find this passage. Mm -mm. Yeah, um, hold your hand in 2 Corinthians 6. Go back to Acts 28. Let me show you this interesting thing. You got it? That happens with Dodie all the time. Oh, good job. This issue of unknown yet well known, I find it interesting that there were times where Paul was so well known, from, even amongst the people in the territory, he would be dragged to the, to the magistrates and people made a big deal. Over in Acts 19, the greatest, Diana of the Ephesians, 
the people, they had a riot over the Apostle Paul. But then there are other times, nobody knew much about him. Interesting, that dynamic. Uh, you got Acts chapter 28, Paul makes it to, uh, to Rome. Verse number 16, Acts 28, 16, if you will. Acts 28, 16, and when we came to Rome, now the we there is Luke is with Paul, Luke the above physician. He's writing this, he wrote, he wrote the book of Acts. He is with the Apostle Paul, so that's why he says we. Verse 16, and when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners, and Paul was one of them, to the captain of the guard. Right. Uh, uh, Acts 28, 16, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldier that kept him. God's grace was with the apostle. And instead of being, you know, treated like the other prisoners and shuffled up, and he had his own privacy, okay? He always was, wasn't he? Yeah, that was the grace and mercy of God in his life, yeah. He's the apostle, so he's going to be able to, he's going to be able to have a place where he could uh, worship the Lord in, 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 in quietness. Yeah. Verse 17, and it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. Now, if you know anything about the Apostle Paul, he loved his people, the Jews. Anywhere there were Jews, Paul sought them out. His ministry was for the Jew first and also to the Gentile. And so he gets to Rome, and there's a group of Jews there at this time. Now, earlier, remember, uh, Claudius Caesar had kicked the Jews out of Rome. That's when Paul, that's how Paul met Priscilla and Aquila earlier, okay, in Acts 18. But anyway, look here, verse 17. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people, that's the people of Israel, or customs of our fathers, the laws and all things that the Jews did, yet was I delivered prisoner from Rome, or excuse me, from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. Who, now he's saying about the Romans, he's already met before the Roman magistrate who when they had examined me would have let me go because but because there was no cause of what death in me no reason to kill him. no reason he did nothing wrong verse 19 but when the Jews spake against it I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar so he had to go to Rome to, before Caesar not that I had ought to accuse my nation of he says I love my people verse 20 for this cause, therefore, have I called for you. You, you. Let me explain what he's doing right here before we get to it. He's calling the leaders of the Jews to try to kind of lay out his case to them. He says, brothers, I'm, I'm innocent here. I want, to, I want us to have some peace with you guys. Let's do it. Verse, verse 20. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you. By the way, to see you. I love how the Apostle Paul, he wanted to, he wanted to have face-to-face -face conversation with them. That, that interplay that way. And to speak with you, because for that, oh, I love this, because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this check. Who, who is the hope of Israel? Messiah. The Messiah, the Lord Jesus, that's right. He says, I'm bound with these chains because I'm preaching Israel's hope, and that's the Messiah, the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Verse number 21, and they said unto him, now, now, remember this unknown, well, look at this, he wasn't even known to him, watch this. And they said unto him, we neither receive letters out of Judea concerning thee. That's interesting to me because they made a big deal when the Apostle Paul was in Judea. That's the southern territory. I mean, there were guys, 40 men who took a vow not to eat or drink until they killed Paul down there. Right. Remember that? Right. But they didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have enough sense to send letters out to, to the Jews at Rome. Right. Verse 21, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. He goes, even the brothers who visited from Judea come all the way to Rome. Nobody said, hey, that Paul, he's a rebel rouser. <laughs> you know why? I know the dynamic. They thought, oh, that's a, so, that's a small little thing he got there. It'll never take off. That's what they think of us. Somebody come look at this little group of people. They say, ah, you kind of have this thing can't go. On. Oh, yeah, it can. Because it's the power of God. Amen. Amen. God chooses the weak things. Um, Amen. I'm going to go over, you can't, hold your hand there. I'm going to read something to you from 1 Corinthians. Do you think God is ever going to expand the grace message? What do you, what do you? Rightly dividing, ever expand it. I mean, it's so small. Is he ever going to do that before? It's all over the world, though, Dodie. It's small here because of the, the, the spiritual darkness. People don't want it. It hinges on their it, will. They yeah, have an yeah. opportunity. And, and, you, you know what, Dodie? 
there's a lot of disp polling dispensationalists in the Midwest, a lot of them. It's actually, this message is all over the world, but it, as far as each individual group, you're not going to get big groups, Dodie, because mm -hmm. people, the people don't want it. And yet we're the ones that are going to rule and reign with him. They reject it. That's How right. How is he going to have enough people to do that? Because he's God. He's going to keep the dispensation of grace going until he got it. <laughs> Real quick, think of the cross, Jesus on the cross. How many people after 5,000, 10,000 people were fed? Yeah. How many people were at the cross? Jewish people, there was only seven. Yeah, and people. not even all of them were Jewish. Some of yep. them were Jewish. Yeah, only seven people listened. Uh, by the way, to the end. this is all you need to know, Dodie. What did the Lord Jesus Christ call his followers in the in the in the Book of Luke? How, how did he term them when he talks about the kingdom? What what type of flock? Little, 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 little flock. Little, oh, little flock. I, the reason I bring that up it is... It just doesn't make sense. We have the message. It's so wonderful. To you. Amen. Because you have this, a heart of belief. Yeah. A heart to believe. Thank you, God. The hope of glory in our heads. See, see Dodie, what makes it that people don't respond is this. Unbelief, pride, mm -hmm. and unbelief. God, I, I, both of those. It may, be, it may be because I've been a general on the front lines... Uh, Brother, Brother King David, he, he, he texted me, said, General Ron, maybe because uh, I've, been, I've been so used to it, it's just the natural way it is. But I feel, the, I, my heart feels your way. Why don't more people believe this? It grieves my heart. It, it, gr it grieves my heart, too, but it grieves the Lord's heart. But mm -hmm. don't he, God is not going to force his word on anybody. I know yeah. that. And depending on the region, too, Dodie, people were more receptive in the Midwest because there were more laborers and it, it, it was more exposure and so forth. And this is the Bible though and so forth. Depending on the region you're at, you're going to have more people. Uh, I think I better move back there. <laughs> no, because you're going to have the same problems back there. <laughs> Especially in upstate no, New York. See, I'll just uh -huh. see more believers. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, how do we walk though? We walk by what? Faith, Faith and not by what? I, I feel you, Dodie, especially in these last days. It's an encouragement to see. Listen, when we go back to Minnesota and we see all these saints, we forget that, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people believe this stuff here. Right. We're all refreshed. I mean, it'd be like, you know, we got a nice crowd, 67. We're like, oh, yeah, that's right. This is the way it was. But we live in California. We live in this last frontier spiritually. It's, it's spiritually darker here, Dougie. Few laborers, and I feel I feel your. But but as a as a as a general, I have to stay strong. But look, the reason why more people don't respond is pride and unbelief. The reason why, and by the way, don't don't walk by sight. Don't. That's what I'm saying. Don't look at the people. You can't go by that. The fact that there's even one soul here, and there's many here. But if there's one soul that believes the mystery, that's a blessing. You have a heart to believe and you have humility. You have a humble heart. You have, you're hum you have a humble heart. And Dodi, those two things are needed in order to believe, to see this stuff. You need a humble heart and a, a heart of faith. A heart of faith. You have a heart of faith. And the people who attend here, the people who follow, they, they, they're the same way. Humility and faith. But why don't more people believe it? These two things, pride and unbelief. And Satan, he wants to use this to discourage us, don't he? Why do I read these things? You're the one who had me read these things a couple years back, and it was the most wonderful thing, because I hope these encourage you when I read people's letters, that although we're small, especially we're, we're unknown, but we are well-known. Mm -hmm. But remember, the people who write these, they don't have anybody else. They don't have other saints who can, they can talk to. We're all they got. And I hear the stories each week about the loneliness yep. of saints who believe this message, use our ministry to get it, but they don't have one other person to hug and to share this with. So don't walk by sight. Don't look at the people. Look at the fact that you have brothers and sisters here who do love the same message you do and be, be encouraged by that. And many who follow by way of the enemy. You, you said, how come it doesn't get out more? It actually is, though. We touch people all around the world, you know. And I pray for those. I don't know them. I don't know their situation. I get it. I get it. And you may not see them till we get to the judgment seat. Mm -hmm. 
But the reason I read these is, you, you know, we do have an effect on their hearts. Yeah. I wish I could see all the saints who want us to visit. I we pray can. for Benjamin, and I don't even know him, but I was impressed with his letter. You know his heart. Recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't. But I you know what? Remember this, Dodi. The blessing of technology is that in these last days, we can, outside of this area, we can at least get it out to other people. And once we go to YouTube, it's, we're going to touch hundreds hundreds more people than what we've been doing now, okay? Now, will you meet them? M most likely not. Not until the, not until the, the rapture. I get you. I feel you. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the Apostle Paul had that saying. You know who he felt that way about? He felt that way about the people of Israel. Yes. His people. His Jews. Because Paul could look at it and say only, look at this, I'm going to show you something. Who is the, who is the best preacher that ever lived? The preacher, Christ. the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew, I think he mentioned, of the millions of people in Israel, he only had a few thousand. During his whole earthly ministry. So it is said. He calls it, Dodi, fear not, little flock. Why would the Lord Jesus, who did everything perfectly, he everything he said was perfect, everything he preached was perfect, he, he had every every as perfect as any man could do it, how did he end up with just a little flock? Pride and unbelief. Pride and unbelief. Yeah, exactly. The Lord Jesus couldn't, for, he could if he wanted to, but God doesn't force you to believe him. Thank you for my heart. I want to show y'all something. I want to show you something. Go to the, I feel you, Dodie. I, I think because I've been a general in the fight so long, generals can see death and destruction and kind of be like, whereas early in the ministry, every, everyone who, I was oh, and then I just, what, what am I going to do? You either want it or you don't. Look at John, everybody go to John chapter 6. I want to show you something. Look at John chapter 6. When I, when I read this passage here, it encouraged me so much in ministry. About 20 years ago, this, this, this verse right here helped me in ministry. <clears throat> I was probably one or two years in the ministry there. And when you first start out in grace ministry, people come, people go, people come. And when people go, you, you, you always, at least I did, say, is it, is it me? The interesting thing is, I don't think that anyone who came and went has ever, they never say, hey, this is why. This, this is a weird dynamic. But then I see things like this from the scripture. Now I want you to read. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 6. Look with me at verse number 64. Let's, let's look at verse 64. By the way, that's a good one too. That's a good one too, Dodie 26. He talks about they only want the miracles and so forth. Mm -hmm. Look at John 6, 64. Mm -hmm. But there are some, this is the Lord speaking, but there are some of you that believe not. Mm -hmm. All right. The Lord Jesus said, there are some of you which believe not. For Jesus knew from the what? Mm -hmm. From the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Even the Lord dealt with people who just didn't believe. Now, wait a minute. Verse 65. And he said, therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my father. The way God deals with man, he, he gives his word, and those who respond by faith, God draws them to him. Now, watch verse 6. Okay, look at here. John 6. I'm going to put it on the board so you can see it. John 6, 6, 6. <laughs> In Revelation, that's the number of the Antichrist, 666. Watch what happens. From that time, a few of his disciples went back. Many. What's the word? Many. Many. They got the perfect preacher, the perfect Lord. He's doing miracles. He's healing people, casting out devils, raising the dead, multiplying loaves and fishes. He's taking care of them supernaturally. From that time, not a few, how many? Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Dodie, 
Our Lord Jesus, they had him. Wouldn't you, don't you want to see the Lord Jesus? I want to see him. Every day I wake up, I want to see you, Lord. They saw him every day. And they heard him say stuff. I'm out. And they walked on. And you think that's crazy. I do too. Why would you walk away from From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Verse 67. Did the Lord Jesus Christ say, please come back, please, please, please. No. Why? He's God. He's like, okay, you, well, you want it or you don't. Verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve. Will you go away? Will you? Every time I read that, he goes, will you also go away? He gave him free will choice. Yeah, he gave free will choice. Right there. He's not forcing himself on him. Now, somebody stepped in with some sense, Simon Peter. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? He's like, where are we going to go? You have the words. Thou has the words of what? Eternal, Eternal life. Peter got it. He says, to whom shall we go? Because they're going to go to the Antichrist, the rest of them. Right. Verse 69, and we believe and are what? Sure. There's the, there's the key. We believe and are sure, no doubt in their minds, that what? Here's, how, here's their confession of faith. Christ. That thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. In Luke 12, he calls him little flock. So, Dodie, you're always going to have, even with the perfect Lord Jesus Christ, I, the truth is only believed by a few. The lie. Wide is the street, wide, wide is the gate, and narrow, uh, wide is the gate, and, and, and large is the path that leadeth to destruction, and many go through there. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the path that leadeth to life, and few that be that find it. You remember the Lord said that? Truth is always going to be a minority. Just, just, just got to come to, just got to come to grips with it. The lie is, uh, is like tantalizing and sensationalistic. Mm -hmm. Is that saying that like, uh, the lie gets around the world until the truth gets? To yeah, the exactly. <laughs> it's just the way it is until the king comes. Y'all know that until the Lord sets up His kingdom and puts the deceiver. We're going to talk about it on Wednesday, but I'm going to talk about when the Lord puts the devil in the bottomless pit for a thousand years, then he won't be able to spread his lies. But until then, it's going to be this way. Go back to Acts chapter 28, if you will. Look at Acts chapter 28. So Paul gets to Rome. He says, hey, I got to talk to my brethren, the Jews. And look at verse 21, if you will. Acts chapter 28, verse 21. And Dodie, I feel you. I feel your heart, your pain. I built up a resistance to it because you cannot be in ministry and have that constantly on your heart. You've got to give it to God. I would have been done a decade and a half ago if, if I let all of that, because it can get discouraging. You know that? You would never want to lose it, though. Check this out. I felt that way when I had 100 people in my ministry back in Minnesota. It was a test of my faith to move to California. By the way, the people we moved for abandoned us within six months. Mm -hmm. You think that wasn't discouraging? But what did I have to do? I said, no, Lord, we're here. We're going to get your work. Did they abandon for the word? Not just for the things of the world, kind of like a demon situation. Like a demon Nicodemus? That's sad. No, That's demons, so demons so have demons. forsaken Paul. Yeah. Nicodemus was a believer Nicodemus. in Christ. Um, it is sad. So if, if you are already discouraged with a hundred folk in your ministry, you come out here to build a new ministry, you know it's going to be, I, I know the deal. I, I've been in the, the very people you moved here for to begin with abandoned you. And so I'm saying, I understand that discouragement. But Paul says, we don't faint. We don't. We keep going. Mm -hmm. I know we're in a spiritual warfare, and I've been on the front lines for years. And you, what is the general going to do? You got to lead the troops. You got to keep going. Look what the apostle Paul did. Verse twenty-eight, chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty-one. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. Now, watch what they do. They said, But well, we want to hear what you got to say. Verse twenty-two. But we desire to hear of thee. What thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, that was the sect of the Nazarenes, that's what they called 
the people who followed Jesus of Nazareth. We know that everywhere it is spoken uh, what? Against. Against. <laughs> Unknown, yet well known. They didn't know all the details and so forth. All the rumor was, was whatever that stuff is, it's not good. Do you know that in the grace message, it's the same way? Mm -hmm. A lot of people haven't come to me and say, Brother Ron, you, you're Pauline this person. Mm -hmm. Will you sit down and explain this stuff to me? They'll go to the internet. <laughs> It'll be hyper dispensationalism, ultra dispensation, all this other stuff that some unbeliever put up there or someone who's not a, a, a Pauline dispensation. Listen, I tell people, if you want to know what I believe, come. People put out there, Brother Ron believes such and such, you can lose your salvation. Now, I never said that, but they wouldn't come and say, hey, did you say that? Nope. It's just spoken against. Paul himself wasn't well known by them, but the sect was. And notice what the sect was known for. Verse 22, but we desire to hear thee, hear of thee what thou thinkest. For it's concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Verse 23, and when they had appointed him a day, by the way, I give these guys credit, everybody. Although they're unbelieving Jews, they said, we want to hear you out. And if someone is, will hear you out, that's all you can ask for, somebody to give you a hearing. Verse 23, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him and to his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus. Now, notice how he did it with Jews. Both out of the law of Moses... And out of the prophets, we call that the Old Testament, from morning till evening. Some. Okay, verse 24, here's your answer, Jody. Don't, don't <laughs> and some believe the things which were spoken. And some believe not. And some believe not. Imagine having the Apostle Paul say, 9 a.m., I want y'all here, and we're going to go from 9 to 5, eight hours straight with a break at four, for lunch at, four, at, 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 uh, uh, at, at 1 o'clock. And I'm going to take this book, the Bible, the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophet, and I'm going to teach Jesus. And people are looking, taking notes, asking questions. And at the end of that thing, the Q&A and everything, some walked out of there. They got it. Others went, I don't believe this. Stuff. How is that? So, verse 24. Remember this the rest of your life. Even when Paul, who was the second best preacher ever lived behind the Lord Jesus, and some believed the things which were spoken. And some believed not. And some believed not. Verse 25. Free will. Mm -hmm. Free will. And when they, check this out, when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Here it is, Dodie. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah, the prophet of our father, unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, that's Israel, and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not what? Mm -hmm. Understand. Seeing ye shall see and not perceive. Mm -hmm. And what is the problem? Verse 27. For the heart... Just stop right there. For the what? The heart. It all is how your heart is. Do you have a soft heart of humility before God? For the heart. Man looks at the outside. God looks what? At the heart until seven. For the heart of this people is waxed gross. You know what a waxing and waning moon is? You ever look at a night, so sometimes you got the big full moon, and it's starting to go into a crescent? until there's no moon and then they have a new moon. It's called a waning and waxing moon. You got a waning moon, that means it gets smaller, and waxing means it gets larger. And you can see it throughout the, the month, right? So you got the full moon, and then it will start to be a little less full, and then a little less full, and then eventually just a little crescent, and then one day there's none. And then it'll, it'll, it'll start the other way. New moon. That's how they do the, 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 the calendar of Israel. And then it'll get larger and larger. And eventually you get it. This is waning. It's getting smaller over. Now, now when y'all look up in the sky and watch all the, the, the phases of the moon, you can see it start out and then get smaller. That's the waning. And when it's small and start to get larger, that's the waxing. It, it's just getting larger. Well, the heart of this people, watch this. Acts chapter 28, verse 27. For the heart of this people is wax gross. Their grossness, their, 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 their unbelief is just getting larger and larger and larger. 
Verse 27, and their ears are dull of hearing. You know, you know what, Dodie? You know how you wear that uh, hearing aid? Yes. Because your ears naturally, be, your physical ears became dull of hearing. That's why you wear, you know, but spiritually, their spiritual ears. He did have ears to hear, let them hear. Dull of hearing, verse 27, and their eyes have they closed. Notice they closed their own eyes. You ever see somebody do this? Mm, don't want to hear, don't want to see. Mm. That's what Israel did. People do that. People do that when they hear the word, right? Stephen said they literally did that. Yes, they literally, they didn't want to hear it. Check this out. Verse 27, and hear with their ears, oh, sorry, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart. See what an understanding of God's word comes from the heart. That's why I'm saying God is not in a hurry for you to grow. He just wants you to keep your heart soft and he'll do the growing for you. Because the understanding comes with their heart and should be converted. And I should heal, heal, heal them. Verse 28. Be it known, therefore, this is the third proclamation of this by Paul to Israel in Acts. Be it known, therefore, unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the who? Yes. That's Paul's ministry to us Gentiles. And that they will hear it. Dodie, there hasn't lacked a Gentile who believes the mystery from the day that Paul said that to this day. Not one. Even in so-called dark ages and all that, we were underground. Because the, 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 the Roman Catholic Church would, would persecute the death. So you'd be under, there, hasn't, there hasn't lacked one person who understood the mystery of Christ from the day that Paul was saved to today. Not one. Very little. is a remnant. That's right. That's what we're a remnant. Verse 29. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reason among themselves. Mm -hmm. I can imagine all these religious dudes walking away saying. the reasoning do. I know. A bunch of religious goofballs. Verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus with all what? You know how you can have confidence when you know God's word rightly divided or you're a formable person. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it to be that to be puffed up. It's just it gives you this rock solid confidence. Come on, who, who got bring it on? I know that Apostle Paul had that. I, I I I got a glimpse of that. I know he know all the Old Testament and all the mystery. Let's ride. Come on, what you got? And I love this at the end of the Book of Acts. No man forbidding him. No man could shut him up. No man could stop him because God's grace and mercy was on the apostle. We're coming down here and go back to chapter uh, 6 of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. So let me encourage you all, those who live in California, those in this ministry. There's only two great churches in California, and it's the highest populated state in the union. That ain't God's fault. That's man's fault. We're busting our tail to get it out of here. Why do you think we do these live studies and stuff? Ryan's up? We're trying to get it out more. I mean, we're doing what we have to do. We got people like Matthew, <coughs> local here, and he has this evangelistic spirit. He talks about, like, we got people, but it's just the fact that the, the spiritual deception and strongholds is very strong in this area, particularly that corridor of the Bay Area, Sacramento seat of authority, and the Southern California, the Hollywood region, just totally anti-God, anti-God, anti -God. It has to be the times we're living in. It is, too. It's just these it last has days. It a lot to do with it. Dodie, you, you, ha you haven't said nothing. The fact that Paul says that it looks at the body of Christ. Go over there. Go over to second. Go over to second Timothy. Go over to second Timothy. Check this out. This is a good place to, to, to kind of wind down the study. You're so right, Dodie. I'm going to show you something. Get 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 2 Timothy chapter 3. Then we'll, we'll come down to it. I, I know Krista has, to, has the children back there. Look it up. 1 Timothy chapter 4. I turned right to it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That happens a lot with you, Doug. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. These pastoral epistles, particularly the Timothy epistles, preparing the body of Christ for the last days of grace. 
Verse number one, first Timothy four one. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. That's with urgency. That in the latter times, and that's the times we live right now, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctors of devils. I see that all the time. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And he goes on to give some of the things forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth and so forth. Go over to uh, 2 Timothy, look at chapter 3. Does that mean vegetarians? Well, not necessarily. This would be in a re religious sense. Yeah, spiritual. Spiritual sense. Oh. In other words, you, you have religious sects who, who forbid you to eat certain meats and stuff. Yeah. Paul says in Romans 14, all meats are clean. God, God sanctified right. all meats. Yeah. Right. And what, what, she meant, what, what he's saying is, they're going to go and use sometimes like the law where God says they're clean meats, unclean meats, and say you can't eat pork and this, that, and the other, all this stuff that you hear. And God says, no, every animal that God, if it's, it's sanctified by the word of God in prayer, you, you thank God for it and you eat it. Okay, so that's what they mean in a religious sense. Chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, 1. For this know also that in the last days, so Dodie, you mentioned these last days. Yeah. What time shall come? Perilous, I'll let you get there. 2 Timothy 3, 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous, perilous is like troublesome, hard, difficult times. Dangerous. Dangerous times shall come. Previous. Now, everybody, I want y'all to know, he's not talking about lost people here. That's Romans 1, the heathen. He's talking about how the church is, right. the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is blow me away. For men shall be, that's the problem, they're lovers of their own selves. Mm -hmm. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded. Now here's the problem. Lovers of what? Pleasures more than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, verse 5. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. What is the power of God today? It's in the grace message. It's in the word of God's grace. Be strong in the Lord and the word of his grace, he tells Timothy. Now, look at this. Verse number six. For of this sort are they which, Ryan calls them creeps. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. Today they do it through technology. And lead captive silly women as in case the weaker vessel is more naive. Silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust ever learning and never able to come into knowledge of truth. So he goes on. The point is, though, in these last days, it's getting worse and worse and not better. That's right. So to your original question, why didn't God, why, why didn't it get, because it's getting worse and worse. Spiritual darkness is increasing. Mm -hmm. The light of God's grace is decreasing to the point where God cuts off the dispensation of grace. We out. The key for us is to be faithful to the end. Amen. Right. Faithful to the end. Now, God in his wonderful wisdom, his infinite wisdom, though, he has made it, that as the dispensation of grace is about to end, he has just the number of people he needed to reign in the heavens for him, with him. So it's going to be called, only God can make those two things come together, right? We got to end. Go back to 2 Timothy, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 6. And uh, next week we'll pick up this issue of, let's read verse 9, then we'll have to end. 2 Corinthians 6, 9. As unknown yet well known. Oh, this is a good one. As dying, and behold, we live, as chastened and not killed. We'll pick up in that passage, Lord willing, the Lord to come. I'm always looking for the Lord to come. I wake up, when I wake up tomorrow morning, if I do, and I see that alarm clock, and Krista got to go to work early, I'm going to say, uh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to get up to serve her, serve Jaylen, my parents, if they need me. I do. My mother needs me to come over and move some tables and chairs. I'll be over there tomorrow, mother. And you saints, because then I got to open my email, saints, brother, Ron, brother, okay, thank you. But here's the point. I, I, we're just going to keep serving the Lord. But don't think I'm not praying to God every day. Come on. Man. And then Christmas sits down and says, yeah, we'll just be driving the car. We'll see something. We'll, go. we'll say it at the same time. Boy, I can't wait for the Lord to come. I said, I know, honey. My name's yeah. Jada Lynn's the only one who wants some time. She wants to have, get married, have children, and all this other stuff. I said, that's a good thing, but we we. Ain't, <laughs> we ready to go. She hasn't lived enough yet. <laughs> I know. 
she's a little girl, she's nine, she's got this whole view of family. Now, it's fine. We put, we, put, we put it in, but secretly her daddy's saying, come Lord Jesus. <laughs> no, you say that. And Rod says that. And Rod, can, I, can I say something? No, no, no. You know what I said, Larry? And I told Rod this too, because he said the same thing. It's like a spiritual bank account that you've been putting away for years, right? I've been in it longer. I am more than willing to, 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 to take what I built up towards my account there, my reward. And cash it out? No, to give, give, it, give it, share it with you all. Okay. Uh, like a bank transfer, Lord. Yes. How about that? So, severance pay. No, I'm saying I'm going to take from my account for all you brothers who are with us. And if you haven't been in it for a lot of years, I'm just going to say, Lord, give, 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 take from me and give it to them because I want them to come. It's a dueling fight here. Y'all want more years. I don't want another day. So <laughs> I'll just, I told the Lord, well, if you can do right. that, which he can, God can do anything, you can take and give Brother Larry and Brother Rod and all the rest of them, give them from my account. I'm good. <laughs> It'd be like if I was a, a billionaire here. I'm, I, you know how they had a lot of stuff? Mm -hmm. A billion and a half dollars. If I got, the, I, I say, the, not one saint who follow our ministry, love our ministry, would ever have to uh, worry about money again, please. We would, we would give all the people who love us as much as we could and say, you know, use it to serve the Lord. What's the name of that account? The, <laughs> the reward of the inheritance. Reward of the, inheritance. Uh, the reward of the inheritance. Colossians 3, 24. And, and Paul says it's fruit abound to your account there in uh, Philippians and in 2 Corinthians. And what I, what, I, what I mean, my heart is this. I understand you brothers who just, who haven't been in as longer than, as me and sisters too. I am willing, if, if God would do it, he knows my heart. I so want the Lord to come now, to, I want to be with him, that I'm willing to, if, 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 if I have anything and I could share it, I would share it with all of y'all, put it like that. I need that crown. Yeah. Well, you've got to get it. Because on, on the day of the rapture or your death, if you're believing the grace message, you believe in the mystery, you're going to get, now, now where you reign, that, that's dependent on between you and the Lord. But anybody, if you love his appearing, let's end over there. Go to 2 Timothy 4. Go to 2 Timothy 4. Matthew brought this up earlier. 2 Timothy 4. So the crown is not dependent on how long you've been in it, Larry. It's how faithful you are with what you, where you at there. Right. Well, then he can come. <laughs> hey, listen. If, if, if you can do a bank transfer, and if, if, if what I built up over the, the, the decades can be redistributed, okay? Real communism, here you go, redistributed. I'm cool with that, man. I just want y'all to get whatever you can get from the world. And I understand the issue of time, you know, I've just been in it longer. I guess the longer you're in it, you're just like, all right, Lord, I'm tired. And, and being on the front lines, man, we're in a battle. I mean, even, even, even warriors have retire at times, you know. They, they're in the military for 20 years, they whatever, and they say, okay, it's time for me to retire. That's how my heart feels, but I'm going to keep fighting. Paul said it, I fought the good fight, he retired. Let's look at it. Mm -hmm. Verse 6, chapter 4, verse 6, 2 Timothy. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time my departure is at hand. Verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And that's the mystery of Christ. Mm -hmm. Henceforth, from this moment on, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And that righteousness is faith and love, remember? Mm -hmm. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. That's the uh, judgment day for us, the judgment seat of Christ. And not to me only, Paul says, but unto all them also mm -hmm. that love his appearing. And that appearing is defined in chapter 1 as the mystery. And Larry, if you, every day you wake up, you say, thank you for the mystery, Lord. That's all he's looking for. Because I, I say this to the Lord, how many men are waking up every morning saying, thank you for the mystery of Christ? Very few on this earth. Most, most members of the body of Christ don't even know what the mystery of Christ is. There are some women. Men and women, yes. Now, I must say, there are some. when I say men, I'm talking about man, uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ, those in Christ. You, know, you got that. He says, when we get to chapter 7, though, uh, at the end of chapter 6, he says, ye shall be my sons and daughters. And daughters, Lord. that's right. That's include our sisters in the world. Right. You guys, in Christ, there's neither male nor female. All the benefits that are afforded us in the heavenly places, it's equally for sons and daughters. This, it's, it's those, we're his, we're his children. We're his children. And he knew every one of us before. The Romans 5 access is available to all. Say that again, Dougie. 
He knew every one of us before we were even born. Yes, that's and he that's, knew that's we would God. be here today mm -hmm. serving him. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna we're fighting hard through faithfulness and prayers and, and, and diligent study and, and, and teaching and preaching of the word to get it out in our area. But I'm just saying, just where we at, I, I can actually compare, because I lived in the Midwest, I saw the fruit compared to here. The battle is, 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 is the same, it's tougher, but we don't see the same fruit that we saw there because it's just so much spiritual darkness here. Isn't it true that when Satan is prevailing and there's so much evil power that it keeps down the righteousness? We're, we're, fight, we, we're, we're fighting a, a, a really tough battle here. It overcomes Compared, it. You know, like in any war, there are going to be places where the, the battle is hotter, right? Like in Israel, Joab said, the battle is hot over here. Let's put, uh, David wanted to put Uriah the Hittite in the hottest battle. But other battles in Israel, they, they were, it was an easier fight. What I'm saying is the easier fight was back in the Midwest where there's more soldiers, more, more light. We're in the hottest battles here, at least in our country, here in California, because it's, all, it's very few swords, people, but it's a lot of enemy out here, spiritual enemy. Yeah. A lot of strong, spiritual strongholds. So we're fighting. I, I tell Krista, I, I, feel my, I feel the aging fighting against this. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real thing. We, we got to stay strong and, and, and support each other. Uh, if you're listening, you never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, now the time. Christ died for your sins. He, he shed his blood on Calvary's cross for you so you won't have to go to hell. Okay? But after you're saved, now it's all about being edified and storing up for the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to help you with both of those. If you don't know that, about salvation, contact our ministry. Any of us in here can articulate a clear gospel to get you saved. And if you're saved, our ministry is designed not just for you all here, but for those following to help you grow in your understanding of the word. You're going to be judged on the things that the Apostle Paul wrote at the judgment seat of Christ. you got to learn. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together today. Thank you for your holy son, your holy word, for your sanctified Apostle Paul and his faithfulness. He was a man like us with all the frailties of humanity. So we thank you for his pattern, for his example. Father, we do pray. I, I feel Dodie's heart that in these last days, particularly where we live here in our country, the spiritual stronghold and the darkness is so strong that we're just fighting and fighting. It feels like an uphill battle at times. But there are times where you, it's called in season, out of season. We're going to have times where the battle is a little easier, but there's going to be times when the battle is tougher. So may we stand strong. And that's why we need every joint supply. I thank you for these saints and for those saints who follow and love our ministry from afar. We, uh, we pray for the day that, that you come, Father. But if, as, as, the son, as your son tarries, we just want to be faithful and obey obedience to you, Father. So, Father, we give you thanks and praise. We ask you to bless the rest of our day. Bless our Q&A. We thank you in the name of your son, the precious Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.